All right, hey, good morning, brothers and sisters. Today is April 8th, 2022, and you get to watch Willard in the window. <laughs> okay, I have a, I have a couple of dreams I wanna share with you. I'm gonna share the one I had last night because I feel it's very encouraging. And then I'm gonna kind of summarize the, the, some of the dreams I've had here in the past. And you'll see that everything is connected. Everything just kind of flows along. So let's start. Uh, first of all, I want to let you guys know that today is Brian and I's 33rd uh, wedding anniversary. So I'm pretty excited about that. And so anyways, here's the dream I had last night. And then, like I said, I'm going to share a couple other ones I had a few days before. I just been praying on them. And as always, I ask you guys to please pray for discernment, okay? Please take everything I say to the Lord. So in this dream last night, I was at my childhood home. Now, I just want to say really quick, God speaks to all of us in different ways. And in all of my dreams, my childhood home has always represented my father's house, okay? And I have many, many dreams that confirm that. So anyways, I was at my childhood home. Now, I was standing in the front yard. Everything was extremely bright, very, almost like what you're seeing in the window right now where my cat is, very bright where uh, you really couldn't see, uh, you know, you couldn't see very far ahead. It was just really bright, really white. So I stood in the front yard and in the front yard was this huge swimming pool. Now there was somebody in the swimming pool, but I wasn't made to know who this was, but I was holding the hose and I was filling the, the pool up with water and I made sure that the water was warm. So this person, um, you know, wouldn't get shocked by the cold water. Now, standing right before that on the sidewalk, because there's a sidewalk that goes from the mailbox box up to the house. So standing on the sidewalk was a classmate of mine. His name is John, and he passed away a couple years ago. I was made to know, notice that on his shirt in really big, big print was the number 44. And he was talking to somebody that was behind me, and I couldn't see who this person was, but they were talking about I don't even remember really what they were talking about. So I go and I walk up on the porch. It's an enclosed porch. And when I walk in onto the porch, I see another classmate and her name is Renee. And that's all that happened in this dream. Okay. But the, when I break this down and, and share with you the symbolism of it, I think you'll be really interested in it. So let me turn my pages here. I took lots of notes this morning. So first of all, in the New Testament, it is recorded that the final days of Jesus' ministries were 44 days long. The first day began when Jesus was crucified and ended on the day when he gave the final instructions to his disciples before ascending to heaven at Mount Olives. So number 44 represents the chosen people in the Bible. John means God is gracious, so I believe we are being shown that the age or the ministry of grace is coming to an end. Renee means born again, a new life. So the final days of the age of grace and our new being, new beginnings or our new glorified bodies. So that was last night. Now I want to tell you, um, like I said, there's a few other dreams. Everything's kind of working together here. So on March 30th, I had this dream. There was, um, I was like in a grocery store and there was a special and it was buy three for $15. This was the special. Now there was only one special left, okay? And I knew that the three, I, I knew this in the dream, I knew it as soon as I woke up, that the three was the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. There was only one special left, okay? Three for 15. 15 means rest. Now in the next scene, Brian and I were going to bridal showers. We went to probably three different bridal showers, but the one that stood out was one of a woman named Lisa. Okay, so when we went to Lisa's bridal shower, there was a picture of her standing in front of the, the cake. And then when I walked into the other room, I saw the entire wall was covered with pictures of, of her in this bridal shower. But yet on the other side of the room was all these pictures of me. And Brian sat in a chair and he was looking at a photo album. And in all the pictures of me, I was in a wrestling, like a wrestling um, gym suit. And I just think that's pretty cool because we you know this I think it was just symbolic of showing all the things that I've wrestled against during my uh my journey here with the Lord okay so 
let's see. And then in the last scene, I was praying for a lady, Jeanette, and her husband. Now, the husband said he didn't like the way that I was praying because I was praying for this woman. I was praying for their, their child, and I was rebuking the enemy and lifting this child up and praying with a guy. He didn't like the way that I was praying. And I said to him, I said, well, this is how I pray. So it was almost like he realized um, that he was wrong in a sense because before he left, he took off his jacket and it was a very, very expensive jacket. And I think it was um, like maybe symbolic of his pride or something. And he gave it to me before he left. He, he removed it. So I took that as a very positive, encouraging um, act that he did there. Okay, so on March 24th, this dream... I'm not sure what to really make of it, but I'll just tell you what happened. I had no idea where I was, but I knew that I sat at a table. Now, I had my mother sit on one side of me and another family member on the other, and I don't know who this was. But at the head of the table was sat a person, and their light was so bright, I had to close my eyes when I turned towards this person because he, he was just radiant. I mean, there was just so much light that it hurt my eyes. So I think we all understand who that was, that person is. But the only other thing that happened in this dream is when we sat there, we had all made this person something. This person was being honored. So we had made something for this person and we had also written something about him. Like you would do at a, like when the best man gives a speech at a wedding. Okay, it was like that. We uh, each had written something about this person and we had gift made something for this person and it was all in honor of him, okay? And that's all that happened in this dream. So let's go, I just real quick want to go over, I mean, there's many, you guys know I've been dreaming for a long time, but let's go over, I just was been being, was led to, to uh, mention this. I just wanted to do a quick summary here. So the special, the three for 15, God is offering everyone a special rest who is willing to receive the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. That's what that scene was. Now, the next thing I want to mention is that bridal showers are usually given within weeks before the wedding. And the special rest deal is almost over. Now, there was another dream I want to share with you, and it's about... Um, I was in an auditorium, and, and the reason I want to share this is because it just goes along with these other dreams that that the Lord has been showing me. So I was in an auditorium... And there was a play taking place, okay? And I'm trying to remember. I'm looking it up real quick because I don't want to goof anything up. Uh, this was a last-minute thing I wanted to add, but let's just see if I can find it. I might have even already told you guys about it, but honestly, I I don't don't remember. So as I'm looking through, it shouldn't be too far back in my journal book here. But I was in the uh, auditorium and there was a play and I knew that I was going to be part of the play but not until the second act and when I woke up I just had this knowing that the second act was talking about Acts 2 in the Bible um, sometimes that just that just happens I just get this knowing that you know what the Lord is talking about and you know what? I don't think I even wrote it down. Shame on me. I I get so... Uh, a lot of times when I share things with Melissa, I share it with her and forget to write it down. Let me look here real quick on my old messages. If you guys don't mind me taking a second here. Let's go to Melissa. Okay. I should be able to find it pretty quick. I just felt this was another... What I, what it seems like I'm being shown is that, and confirmed over and over, is that we are, th the, the great, the end of, the age of grace is about to end. This is what I keep getting over and over, that we are, we are at the end of this, this age of grace. Okay, hang on. I guess I could redo this video and get more organized here, but what fun would that be? That would just not be fun. Oh, I found it. Okay, so this is the dream. I was given a book of a play that I was to be in. So they handed me this book, and, and I knew that I was going to be in this play. Now, I was at my Uncle Leroy's house, 
and I was out, and this is just down the road, and I was just reading it, and it was dark, but there was a light over me so that I could see. Now, a woman named Frida was in the play, too, and she sat with me. In the next scene, Brian and I are in an auditorium or a movie theater, and the first act of the play was being shown as like in a movie. So when I was sitting there, I thought that this was just going to be like a commercial. You know how they, when you go to watch a movie, they'll, they'll do a trailer scene of another movie? That's what I thought this was, but actually it was the play had already started. And I remember thinking, gosh, I haven't even had time to practice my lines or anything. So anyways, I was thinking that this was odd, that we hadn't even practiced or rehearsed the play, but the first act was already done. It was over and done with. Now, a woman whose name was Sandy sat across from me and she said, Rhonda, are you in the play? And I said, yes, I'm in the second act. The lights came on and we left. So what's coming to me, what came to me that night was act two. Act one is done. And I knew that this next scene or the act was about, was about to start. So in Acts 2, I had to ask myself, okay, well, what's in Acts 2 in the Bible? And that is Pentecost. Now, I'm not saying anything's going to happen in Pentecost. This is, uh, I'm just explaining to you guys what I see what and, and what I'm showing in these dreams. So anyways, that's what my first thought was when I woke up was, that's what came to me is Acts 2 in the Bible, which is about Pentecost. This year, Pentecost is on June 6th. Well, when I was taking my notes down this morning, the next thing the Lord reminded me of was in 2019, I was handed, in a dream, I was handed a piece of paper. When I opened it, on one side of the paper was a decorated Easter egg, and on the other side, uh, on the other side written in words were, End of Grace. And then I was reminded of the old dream that I had of the clock, where 8, 9, and 10 were ripped off. So this, the number 7 was the last number on the clock. So the seventh month is Nisan, which is March and April, like um, the second half of March, the first two weeks of April. But the seventh religious month is September and October. And September and October has always been something really close to me because of the dream that I had where I switched those two months in a dream. For some reason, I switched September and October, or September and October were already switched. They had, were flipped around. So that was another thing that came to me and then the dream of the two planets i still don't understand what that means something could have happened that we may not you know may not know about or or maybe it was nothing i don't know but then last night i dream about uh john and the number 44 uh which means that was the number 44 like i said was how many days jesus is jesus was uh ministry was after he was uh crucified and 44 represents a chosen people. When I think of chosen people, I think of those that are going to be raptured. That's what comes to my mind. And actually, guys, that was the last page in my journal book. Um, so now I got to start a, a new book. But just thought it was pretty cool. So anyways, those are the dreams I had I wanted to share with you guys. And ask you, as always, to please pray for discernment. Take it to the Lord. They are dreams. And um, I shared what my thoughts were on this. And uh, I just can't help but feel in my heart and my spirit how close we are. Because as you can see, just with the, the few dreams, past dreams that I've shared with you, it's constantly talking about the, the end of grace, the end of the age. So... Um, if you don't know Jesus, I'm going to ask you again, please call out to him today, okay? Call out to the Lord and ask him to be uh, your Lord and Savior. Trust in him for your salvation, because that's what we do. We, we're trusting in Jesus for our salvation. Accept him. Um, receive the Holy Spirit. Uh, as long as you're alive and breathing, it's not too late. And if you're not sure, again, just call out to him. Uh, you guys know my testimony um, when I first started talking to him, I know I felt silly at first, but, and I was just that type of foolish person that I had to believe to see. And, and God has just been doing that since 2008, constantly showing me. And I'm extremely, extremely blessed. There's just, I can't put into words how much Jesus loves you. I, I just, I can't. But if you knew, if you felt it, you would be rocked. You'll be rocked right off your feet. So, again, I pray for each and every one of you guys. I pray that 
the Lord will bless you and keep you. I pray for your families. I, I just lift every one of you up to the Lord. I, I pray for the salvation of every soul. I do this every night. I just pray and um, just accept Jesus today, guys. Get off the fence. We don't have much time. I love you guys. I truly do. And I, I pray you all have a wonderful day. All right. Bye.